I am Brian Dutton. I was married to uh, Mandy for nine years. And these are my in-laws still. When she was first born, um, they discovered that she had something going on with her heart. They didn't know for sure what. She had holes, she had pulmonary stenosis. She had um, a, lot of, a lot of things going on. She ended up having six open heart surgeries um, over a course of her life. Well, I think her congenital heart problems shaped her up the, the young lady that she become. I mean, she had a fight for everything that she got in life. She came home from serving a mission in Florida, and when she came home, her lungs weren't doing well. She was, um, she was coughing up things she shouldn't be from her lungs, and she started to, her heart started to fail. She had plans, she wanted to get married, she wanted to um, have a family. She got on a dating site, and that's where she met Brian. We had to make some decisions whether, what were we gonna do about children before we got married. You know, we had, <clears throat> we were able to have three adopted children and I didn't realize how lucky I was <clears throat> to have her in my life and just to have her special personality. The word transplant scared me. Then when they come up with a solution, I thought that was sounded so much better because it wasn't a transplant. And for me, I thought, oh yes, if she had a heart transplant, then she would be 100% whole again. She researched it, she explored it, she presented it to her doctors, and they're like, well, let's see, this infection that she had, it had been several years. So, um, they told her that they they would um, put her through the transplant process. And so she started that heart transplant process. Um, she got all the way to the all the way to the very end. Um, she had one more doctor to see and it was for the for her lungs. Then we had to wait a couple hours to see the lung doctor. She was just as blunt as could be. She goes, Well, Miss Mrs. Dutton, you'll never make it off the table you won't survive. And if you do survive, you'll probably have a stroke and you'll be a vegetable. And then we got out to the car and she goes, Dad, they're sending me home to die. And she was quiet all the way home. We got the letter at the house. They mail you out a letter, pulmonary reasons. We cannot list you on the transplant list. And we didn't know what else to do, you know? We had to do something, we had to act. We listed at five different hospitals and nobody would take the case. We ended up moving to a lower elevation to try to relieve some of the symptoms and she passed away three months later. But I believe, and she believed, that the heart would have helped with the other organs. They said, the organs have to go to the best quality possibility of survival. I mean, they didn't even mix words point blank to just like that. Then there isn't enough education about organ donation. There isn't enough awareness. There isn't enough being talked about. There's so much more we can do. So we can make a real difference with organ donation. All them years of going to the doctors, they would sit down at the table and say, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And if another problem come up, they would say, we can do this, we can do that. They always had an answer. But when she'd become an adult, they didn't know where to put her. University took her and we was gonna get a surgery there and the surgeon come in the day before and said, it's too complicated. He didn't want it on his record. Then they sent us back to Children's Hospital. When they point blank say that the, the organs have got to go to a qualified person because we have so few, we don't want to waste it on you. And that's pretty hard for a dad to sit 
and uh, watch his little girl sit in the corner and shut down.